Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you, and we're here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more, you create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. I am really honoured and so excited to be joined by Tamika Awai today. I've had the privilege of being a client of Tamika's, so this is why I'm so excited to introduce you to everybody in our community. Thank you so much for being here, Tamika. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. I'm just, I've been looking forward to this conversation all week. Yeah. Yay. So I wanted to share your bio as a way of introduction and then we'll dive into our conversation because you've just got so much wisdom that I know you can share with with our community and with our listeners. And I love your bio. Um, so these words and I was just like, yes, this sums up Tamika. Muse, magician, mentor, marketer, creative. These are the most common words that precede an introduction to me to Tamika Awai. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Tamika is the CEO of Arisha Creative, an inventive nurture marketing agency that serves leaders in the online coaching industry. She's also the creator of the Nurture Matrix, a unique evergreen nurture marketing framework that's revolutionizing the way master coaches approach social media and email marketing generating millions in the premium coaching program sales, generating millions in premium program, uh, coaching program sales along the way. Yes, <laughs> I love it. And you live in um, the originally stewarded by the Miss, Mrs. Saga of the Credit First Nation, Nations, presently known as Ontario, Canada, with your husband and children. And you can be found swooning over Spotify daily mix in your hot bubble bath. I love it. Yeah. Not trying to perfect your oyster shucking game. <laughs> Those are my pastimes, my hobbies. <laughs> I just had to share that because I just was like, yeah, this is really shares what, what you're all about. So everyone can <laughs> feel your personality. So thank you so much for, for, for sharing that. Um, so let's let's dive in. What led you to, to starting your business? You know, how did you get to, to do what you're doing now? Yeah, it feels like such a windy, like, how did, how did I even get to here? But, you know, corporately, my background, my, you know, uh, university degree is in, is in business and specialized in marketing. Uh, so had a corporate marketing career for a good 10 years. Um, and then, you know, a couple of days before I found out I was pregnant or was, I can't, I can always forget which order it was, but I um, found out I was pregnant and then I was laid off a couple of days later from the corporate space. And so it was my first child and I had this decision, you know, we've got, we're in Canada, so we've got mat leave, which is lovely. So I had a full year with the baby girl and um, had to decide, am I going to go back into uh, the workforce or am I going to start my own thing? So I became an entrepreneur because when I looked in the workforce, it was 2009. So the economy dipped quite a bit and um, marketing jobs were kind of the first to get slashed in terms of salaries and budgets. And I was sort of like, I could go work for someone else and make less than I had been, you know, making substantially less, or I could finally, you know, put my foot forward and, and see, you know, where this is going to lead me. And it's so interesting. The first thing I reached for in terms of starting a business, uh, it was in the marketing space, but it was very different than I had, you know, than anything I had done previously. I started a fashion event marketing company and yeah, so I used to do like pop-up shops, which are very common now, but like back in 2010, I'd call up these realtors and be like, can I borrow your space to hold a fashion show and a shopping party? And they were like, what do you you want to do? What? And so I would, so I, I would bring all these people together 
um, really, and create these relationships between startup fashion brands, more established retailers, uh, consumers, and sort of create this, this space for them to all to get, get to know each other and, um, and do business together, which, you know, I love so much, but, you know, when you get a business started, you don't know what you don't know. And you certainly carry with you a lot of baggage from the corporate space around what you can earn, what, you know, what your, what your um, work is worth and all of those pieces. And so I had a lot of that attached to me. And so that business didn't really take off the way that I wanted to. It was a really expensive hobby. Um, and through that, I hired my first coach. And that is how the, the rest, as they say, is history, because I hired my first coach and starting to figure out, trying to figure out like, you know, what, what, what is this, what I want to do and what do I be? Mm. And I really fell in love with the coaching industry. And I fell in love, um, you know, with the transformational transformation that's possible on the other side. Um, but I also had my like, you know, marketer eyes on, and it was kind of like, there's some things that I see happening that, that, you know, could be a little bit different or could be done differently. And so that was really the inspiration, um, to, to start Arisha, um, the agency that, that I run today. And there was a, um, client that I worked with in, in particular, cause you know, what I, in the process of trying to figure out like, who am I going to be, what am I going to do? I said, okay, well, let me just be a freelance marketer. Let me just, you know, freelance with my skills and content creation and communications and all that stuff. And so I started taking on clients who were coaches and freelancing for them, content creation, content strategy. And one of the things that I really noticed was that um, there was a heck of a lot of time spent on lead generation, you know, attracting new people into community and a heck of a lot of time spent on enrolling programs, right? The whole launch framework and everything else. Um, but in the middle of the, the funnel, if it were like, there was stuff happening, but it just, it seemed like we we're just doing stuff to do stuff. <laughs> You know, Louisa, like it didn't feel like there was a true um, intention. It felt almost disconnected from, mm. um, from the, the, the customer journey or from that funnel journey of sort of like, you know, if we're, we're attracting all these folks and we want them to become clients on the other side. I just kind of thought to myself, I'm like, shouldn't there be a way, like, shouldn't we be more intentional? Shouldn't we be more focused on ensuring that what happens in the middle actually helps these people step into the transformation that they're showing up because they're so curious about and leaning towards, like, shouldn't this nurture help them move forward? And I found instead what a lot of coaches were doing, they were creating a lot of content to stay visible and valuable, but it was almost like a, you know, and there's nothing wrong with being visible, visible and valuable, but it was kind of like it was created um, just so they didn't feel like they were selling all the time. Yes. Right. It was like, let me just create some stuff, you know, more content, more blogs, more videos um, without a call to action mm. so that when I get ready to sell, I can, you know, go all at it. Like it, it didn't, you know, there was just a, there was a surface la layer of, of um, interaction or relationship building that I felt was happening. And I just was really curious. I'm like, you know, what if we went a whole lot deeper and my corporate background, you know, did include a lot of um, customer journey, buyer's journey, and sort of really getting scientific with mapping out the actions that folks take before they buy. And so I really wanted to bring that into the coaching industry. And that's where the Nurture Matrix was born and, and Arisha was born. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And yeah, how you approach things is so different. I completely resonate with what you're saying around the gap that you saw in the, in the marketplace out there. And, and the intention that people have, of course, behind everything that they're creating, people can feel that, you know, it does create that, that disconnect. It's like stuff and then yeah. value <laughs> rather than yeah. let's have it all being a value. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, you know, being really clear on like being really clear on the intention so that um, the, the definition of value is shifted right? Because it's not that what many folks are creating right now is not valuable, but really what does valuable mean, right? In this context, what does valuable yes. mean? Yes. What, what's going to be, make, make a, a difference to somebody rather than being it something else that they've just kind of consumed. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Another thing that they've collected on the internet that helps them feel as though they're taking action, but not actually, you know, getting the result that you know is possible when they step in and work with you. Oh, yes, that's it. 
it's confession time, I think, for everybody who's like a content hoarder. <laughs> right? You know, creating all the things and all the things, right? We yeah. consume it. Yeah, completely. So I know because you've got a unique uh, way of uh, approaching this. So from your perspective, you know, why would you say why is lead nurture more important than lead gen if you really want to to serve and sell? Yeah, yeah. You know, and of course, lead gen is important, right? It's all it's all important. Um, But the biggest mistake that I see most coaches make is that they are, again, pouring all this time, energy, attention into lead generating. but it's a, it's a leaky bucket that they're creating if they don't have this really intentional way of ensuring that those new leads that they have stepping in are moving along their buyer's journey to become new clients, mm-hmm. right? So you can be in perpetual lead generation mode. And then when you really look at it, only a small percentage of them, of these new leads are actually stepping in to work with you. And, and so, you know, what are you seeing converting maybe... 1%, 2%, 5% if you're lucky, but it's a very small, you know, percentage. Really think about this. And I invite anybody kind of listening, think about, you know, whatever you have as the top of your funnel. So whatever freebie you're giving away, whatever the thing is that people will exchange their email address for, of the of the people that come in and if, of the people that give you that email address, what percentage of them actually move forward to book a call or, you know, buy a product if it's click to buy or, you know, take some next step, watch your sales webinar. Like what percentage of those new leads actually take that action? And it's like a really small percentage, right? And so if we're not thinking about lead nurture, we're not really thinking about, okay, of the other like 98, 99% who weren't ready at that time, if I'm not really thinking strategically around what I'm going to do, how I'm going to support them to move towards making that decision, then I basically, I, you know, I'm wasting my time. I'm spinning my wheels. I'm always mm. going to be in this place of needing new leads. And I think for a lot of people, the big light bulb moment is they realize, you know, they've got a launch coming up and they can't really count on their list to be the place where those clients are going to come from. Right. Because those leads are not nurtured. And so they're like, oh, well, the launch is coming. Better get more new leads. And so it becomes this really, you know, a race then to always, always be in lead generation mode. And so I do believe continue to generate those leads for sure, but take some time, stop and really think about like what happens next. If they don't take that initial step, you know, towards working with you, how can you support them? Uh, so that they're doing that. And it, and it's not by sending them stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Right? yes. laughs> yeah. Yeah. No more stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, and what, um, what I really re- uh, recognize with what you're sharing is this is the way of how to get off that hamster wheel that can, can happen, particularly as people are growing from that six to seven figures is if you're in that lead gen cycle that you're describing and haven't got that piece of the process where you're loving on your community and helping them to have value that's going to help them transform and move towards the bit that they need to move rather than oh that's a lovely post like (laughs) exactly like hearts yay Yay. you know (laughs) it's so true that's that's such a such a game changer what because the the you know what we see out there working in the on the online space changes over time what's working in nurture marketing right now yeah I think what's working um and I think what will always work is being super clear on the messaging that your people need to receive. Mm -hmm. Um, It doesn't matter how many new cool things, Instagram, Facebook, you know, what have you put out. I think ultimately the way that you stand out on every platform is by speaking to your person directly, right? Like having that conversation, uh, you know, one-to-one almost, right? We we talk about uh, in marketing, you'll hear, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. So what's really working is talking to someone, a specific Uh, someone who represents, you know, what an ideal client looks like for you um, and really nailing that messaging. So that, that works really well. I think the other piece that works really well um, is repetition. You know, we came from the era of like, again, create all the content. And there were even marketing mentors out there that were just like, you know, pump out content. And they were, you know, inviting you to do these like 30 day or hundred day challenges where you create a piece of content every single day. And those can be really fun and great and great. But the, um, 
the what they led most people to do is to try to create new things all the time. So they're trying to they're trying to become uh, magazines, you know, with a, an ed- editorial calendar and 365 different articles mm. that you're going to put out in a year. And what's actually working now is like scaling it back and really repeating the core messages that your people need to receive, right? That repetition is actually what has you stand out and what has um, you really stick into the minds of your of your ideal clients, of your of your prospects, right? That, you know, not saying a different thing every single time, but actually saying, you know, a slightly different version of the same thing all the time, because then you become known for, you know, delivering that transformation, or you become known as that expert who knows, you know, the real way to get, you know, X result, right? We, we talk a lot about like, you know, needing to build the no like, and trust factor, right? But no like, and trust, it, it doesn't mean anything if, they're not actually going to step forward and and work with you. And in my view, kind of really getting clear on the messages that they need to receive, owning that and repeating that builds a different kind of trust. And it builds that kind of trust that actually has people lean in and raise their hands and want to work with you. Yes. So good. That that's just amazing. When you said the hundred day challenges, I could feel my energy go, ugh. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, time to write all right. that <laughs> Right. It's Again. it's a lot. It's it's I mean, it's a lot. And I think, you know, we're all kind of looking for ways to be, or at least I am. I know you are too, but like looking for ways to be more efficient in the way that we're um, running our business and the way that we're supporting our clients. Um, and I would just much rather have that capacity to serve more people than, you know, to be creating, you know, a hundred more pieces of content. Oh, absolutely. It, and being able to write it from a place of it really having that value and that, that transformation. Um, I always invite my clients to, you know, do a little meditation beforehand mm. so that they can um, connect in. You know how you were talking about speaking to one person. Yeah that's that's who you're talking to um so that they can really really hear that message it, uh, it feels like it that moment just takes away that overwhelm of where have I got to write you know who am I writing to absolutely. how is everybody going to understand it absolutely and I think even for um coaches who feel like they aren't particularly great writers um I think a lot of that insecurity can melt away when they lean into sort of the superpowers that I haven't met a coach that doesn't have this, but like pretty much all coaches have this superpower that actually can help them become really great um, copywriters. And that's really leaning into their empathic intuition, right? So really using their empathy and using their intuitive, um, you know, gifts to really Mm. connect into, like associate into what their ideal client um, is experiencing so that they can, again, when you're talking about writing to that one person, right? If you're like stepping in and it's like, what do they need to receive? Like, how would this resonate for them? Would they say it like this? Would they want to hear it like that? Like you can tap into that. And that's what helps you. Number one, really, you know, hone in on what the message is that your people need to receive. And then number two, make it a whole lot easier for you to actually create nurture content that is going to resonate, feel authentic and not feel, you know, like you're dragging your feet through the mud all the time. Yeah. So true. And I have to say for our listeners, I, 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 having been a client of, of yours, Tamika, um, a, a lot of the, the feedback that I get from my clients is that I write really well. And it's because of Tamika. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Know, you. I committed to myself like over the last couple of years, like I really want to get better at writing and being able to share the, me- the message that we have in our company. And that was one of the areas that I identified as a skill development for myself to be able to go, right, I need to go and I want to get better at doing this, you know, being able to share the message. And yeah, so thank you. <laughs> welcome. You're welcome. And it's so funny. And number one, I acknowledge you for like devoting yourself and, and really recognizing that that's a skill that you need to learn because it can be really easy to want to like pass the buck on the copy. I mean, there's tons of, you know, amazing copywriters out there and it can be really easy to say, well, I'm not that great at it. So I'm just going to outsource it. And I tell you what, you can get to a space where that makes sense for you. But for most Mm -hmm. coaches, um, they need to be the first um, copywriter for their business. And you can always bring in a writer to kind of take it to the next level. But a lot of what you're refining when you're um, creating copy, and especially when you're creating it in sort of the, you know, the way that we do uh, with the nurture matrix, Mm -hmm. you're, you're really um, refining the way that you communicate your unique vantage point, 
your unique way of talking about things, teaching things, right? So you like that needs to come from you first. A writer can't come up with the way that you're going to talk about something like that is your body of work. And so again, you can always bring someone in to kind of punch it up a little bit or, you know, be in spaces where you can get feedback that can help move you forward. But I really, you know, if you're kind of like, I just want to get a copywriter, um, I invite you to not, and if you've worked with, you know, there's the other piece that I'll get is I'll hear someone say, oh, I can never find a great copywriter. And often it's not actually the copywriter. Again, it's because they haven't really defined or refined their body of work and how it's communicated. And so they're expecting someone to kind of like say it the way that they would say it, but they've never said it before. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And so, so we're always like at this impasse, right? We're always at this impasse. The best thing that you can do for yourself, if you're wanting to, you know, eventually be out of your marketing, out of the copy and that kind of thing is spend that time up front. Um, so that over time you can bring people in that can support you. And they've got a really solid foundation, uh, to pull from, um, that, you know, from, from my days, you know, in being on team for, for others, uh, that is just a game changer. So, yeah. so good so good how, how can you up, up your nurture game I'm sure mm-hmm. this is a question everyone's going well how do I up my nurture game yeah out doing the 100k 100k, <laughs> 100K challenges um you know getting trapped on that content creation um tre- treadmill any tips for our, our listeners yeah. around that yeah the good news is like this part is relatively simple it is actually relatively simple so Um, the big thing that you want to shift away from is to spend a little less time, maybe a lot less time, depending on how much you've been creating, but spend less time creating how to content. We love from a nurture space. And this was really taught. This was commonly taught before. So if this is what you've been doing, it's not your fault. Like, you know, everyone was kind of taught this, um, when we talk about nurturing, we talk about, okay, let's, let's give them a rest tips and tricks and that kind of thing. Again, this is visible and valuable and giving them this content that's going to, you know, give them something to do, or again, have them see how, you know, how much of an expert we are because we've given them this resource, right? Shift away from that and instead orient your, yourself towards um, creating nurture messaging or creating nurture content that is going to help your ideal clients to shift their perspective around their problem. That's like the biggest, you know, and that's the backbone of the nurture matrix It's the backbone of what we teach. It's really that when you can teach um, or open up a new perspective to your prospects, if you can help them think about their problem in a different way and also how they can solve it in a different way, they ultimately see you as, as like, they trust you. They're like, you understand what's going on for me better than I do myself. And you've helped me to see this in a whole new way that I hadn't really considered before. Like that shift in awareness or shift in perspective that you're able to help them get, that's what creates kind of that lean in factor. That's what has them wanting to move forward and work with you. Not you giving them a bunch of how-to stuff where they're like off trying to do the how-to, getting stuck because they actually need your help, right? So less time with what to do and more time on content that helps them to think differently and even feel differently so that they can take a different action, right? Like we, you know, coaching kind of basics is that we can't see transformation until we have that shift in awareness, right? Until they have that shift in awareness, they can't, it's not available to them to make another choice. And so we're applying that same piece in our marketing and our messaging. Yeah, it's so good. For me, that was a real game changer, really embodying that and then infusing that into, into my business. And and as you said, and I'm sure everyone's going, yeah, of course, of, of course. That of course. makes so much sense. <laughs> Why would I be yeah. doing this? But like you said, you know, all the, the, the training before and what was kind of the norm in terms of online marketing um, was was the, the how-tos and the, that being giving the value. But this is like you say, this is the absolute game changer and the core of the transformation that you teach for people's marketing. It's just yeah. um, ph- phenomenal. Where where would you say then, thinking about this, you know, does the best nurture content mm. come from? I'm trying to think of all the questions that our, our listeners would be asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best nurture content. Um, in a perfect world, you're sourcing your best nurture content from your clients mm. at a specific point. You're sourcing it from the conversation that they're having with you before they start working with you. Right. Mm -hmm. So having, you know, having that dialogue or even, you know, right in your um, discovery call process, or if not your client intake process, but finding out kind of, and spending some time, like, 
you know, what, what was going on for them? What, what did it look like to kind of walk a day in their shoes before they started working with you or, you know, before they embarked on the, on the journey to work with you and what sort of things had they tried before? Like what mistakes had they made trying to solve this problem along the way, or what myths have they, you know, had they buy into, bought into that, you know, when they finally were able to release that they were able to take another, um, you know, action. And then same thing, like, what did their beliefs look like? What was that belief jump that they had to make just to be able to step in and say, yes, like that's where, you know, the nurture, um, messaging really, you, you want to source that from, because what you really want to try to do is come up with, um, nurture messaging and, and I should we call them your core nurture themes, but come up with nurture themes that really speak to kind of the different conversations that your, you know, prospects are having in their heads and you know, kind of in their heads and in their hearts, mm-hmm before they step in to work with you. And then, you know, you meet that conversation with a perspective shift, right? So like you want to really source it from, um, from ideal clients and, you know, and for folks who are listening, who maybe are are not quite far along where they don't feel like they have enough client data, or maybe they're changing their offering. And so they're working with new people. Like there is a certain amount of just leaning into your empathic intuition and making an educated guess to begin with. Um, but slowly but surely over time, you want to match that up, sync it up with real life uh, data that you're getting from, from people that you actually work with. Yes, yeah, so yeah. good. So good. So this is how it's reaching more souls that you can make the, the impact with and exactly. that, creating that ripple effect around the world. I always think of marketing like it's just a, it's a conversation yeah. having with, with people and and uh, yeah, I don't think I would be in a conversation giving someone a how to list, but we would be having a conversation around, you know, the perceptions and beliefs and all the things. So Exactly. Exactly. It's so interesting, right? Like, you know, when the internet, when the internet was born, um, (laughs) right. And the coaching industry was a lot smaller, right. There was this like, you know, they, who creates the most content kind of is the most visible. Right. And that like, that's really how it was. And I think that's where, um, the sort of, um, sort of churning out of content came from. And as I said today, it looks a lot different. There are, you know, the coaching industry is a, you know, billion with a B, you know, multi-billion dollar industry. And there are so many coaches and so many um, amazing people looking for coaching. And um, we don't need to be, you know, worried about competition at all. There's more than enough for everyone. But what we do need to do is to ensure that our messaging is really clear, focused, streamlined, and locking in with our ideal people. Like they've got enough, they can access a lot of stuff everywhere else. And you need to be the one for them who is not giving them stuff, but actually having that conversation that, that feels almost one-to-one to them, even though, you know, you know, you're speaking to your list, but you want that um, effect of them feeling like they're speaking to you, to, to, you're speaking to them directly. Um, that's what has you stand out for them. That's what has you stand out as their mentor versus their coach versus, you know, all the other possible options up there. Yes. So so much wisdom. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, I could chat to you all day, Tamika. Um, And I know you've very generously uh, got, I mean, the most amazing free gift. So everyone needs to head over and and grab it. Do you want to tell everyone about your fabulous free gift? For sure. For sure. So we have this awesome tool we use at Arisha called the Nurture Opportunity Scorecard. And it is a assessment that we actually use with our, um, with our paid clients and we take them through it and we'll do it for them, but we make it available for anyone you to download um, for free and you can take yourself through a self-assessment. And there's a little video that kind of walks you through what to look out for. um, But that will help you sort of just start to look at what you've been doing you know, up until now, uh, from a nurture marketing perspective, look, you know, across social and email and just kind of, you know, take note of some things that you may want to, to change, um, as far as messaging. And, you know, we get into a little bit of like the types of content that you might want to create as well. Um, but it's a really helpful way to get started. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, for most folks, when you listen to a conversation like this, you know, to your point, Louisa, it's like, okay, well, I can, I can see that I've, you know, missed the mark in some areas. What next? And this is just a really great place to start to clarify, you know, where you want to make some immediate changes. Mm. Oh, it's, it's yeah. so good. I've done it. Well, Risha did it for, did it, yes, we did. it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, very, very grateful. 
really really comprehensive so it is um incredible incredible gift thank you so much yeah absolutely absolutely generosity with that how can people stay in touch with you because I think everyone needs to stay in touch with you yes yeah so we hang out most on Instagram you can find us at Arisha Creative there um the scorecard you can grab at nurturematrix.com forward slash scorecard and that'll have you on our list and we can get connected there and we you know you'll see what our nurture sequence looks like so for if nothing else it's a uh you can kind of get an idea of um of what it looks like to be nurtured in that way um yeah and i think those are yes those are kind of our favorite places to hang out instagram and then you know on the email we, we keep it really streamlined we practice what we preach i'm not um not a big fan of trying to be in all the places and create all of the content and it's a very focused conversation that we have with our community as well um you know because again i'm looking for the efficient way <laughs> efficient way to, to to do my best work and you know to support the the coaches that we're meant to support um so yeah we're we're not kind of in all we're just really streamlined yeah i love it i yeah. love it so not on TikTok yet or <laughs> no, I mean Jane on our team was like, I'm just gonna create an account just in case. <laughs> I was like, okay, Jane. <laughs> so I said we can start by exploring, you know, what other, you know, um marketers and coaches are doing on TikTok and we can discuss it at our team retreat in the summertime. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, I love I love the approach. Thank you so much for 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 sharing the the wisdom there and for the free gift and the and the links. Um, it's just been wonderful having you on the show. I love chatting to you. Thank you for for being you, for being here, and for all you do for for the coaching industry. It's just phenomenal. Thank you so much for having me, Louisa. This is a fantastic conversation, as all our conversations are. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Alrighty, my friends, thank you so much for, for joining us. And, and I encourage everybody to go and follow Arisha uh, Creative and check out Tamika. Um, we'll pop her agency links and the personal links um, below the in the show notes so that you can follow along and download her amazing free gift as well. And until next time, we will see you on our next episode. Sending you all lots and lots of love. Take care. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.